In this video, I wanted to talk about the concepts of the x and y intercepts of a graph. Now, what the x and y intercepts are is where the graph intercepts at the x and y axis. So the x-intercept is where the graph axis, um, where the graph intersects with the x-axis, and the y-intersection, or the y-intercept, is where the graph meets up with the y-axis. And I'll show you an example here. So let's draw just a regular line here. I'll just draw this in a different color so it's easy to see. And let's see, I draw a line something like this. Okay, and just change it to a different color. Okay, so let's say for instance this is the graph of our of our relationship between the two variables x and y. Now, what this would mean is we uh, we can look at um, where this graph intersects the x-axis. Okay, and we can see that it goes at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is x at 7 here. Right? And in the y-intercept would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a half. So 7.5. You know, what that means is that our x-intercept is at 7, the y-intercept is at 7.5. And what these really tell you is, um, well, they tell you different things depending on the equation and the nature of the relationship. So let's take a look at using a different example uh, using an equation. So let's say, for instance, instead of them, let's say instead of just drawing a line, I give a relationship. So something like uh, y is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay, so just something simple. From this, what I can do is I can make a table of x and y values. Okay, so I can say, okay, so I'll just make a quick table here. Okay, and I can say x and y values. And I start at x is, let's say, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so when x is negative 2, we have 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, plus 1, so y would be 3. When x is negative 1, we have negative 2 plus 1, um, which is negative 1. And when x is 0, we just have 1. And when x is 1, we have uh, 2 plus 1, so that's 3, and when it's 2, we have Okay, so from there, what we can do is we can graph a series of ordered pairs. So we have neg negative 2, negative 3, so negative 2, 2, 3, so 1 dot there. Negative 1, negative 1, so we have 1 right there. 0 and 1, so we have 1 right there. Okay, and 1 and 3, so 1 there, and 2 and 5. Okay, so something like that. Alright, and what we can do is we can draw a line that would represent these. Now, if I had these totally accurate, they would be in a straight line. Okay, now what this means is that we have x and y, x and y intercepts here. Now, the way we could figure this out now, it might not be really easy to see, but you can tell that the x-intercept is somewhere in between neg negative 1 and 0. And the y-intercept looks like it's at, at the one at, at 1, but it's hard to tell. Now, what we can do to find out uh, for, for certain what these are is by looking at a certain property of the x and y-intercepts. Now, along the x-intercept, all of the values have to be equal, all of the y values have to be equal to zero. And the reason why is because the x-axis lies along the point where y equals zero. So what we can do is we can then say, well, if I replace y as with a zero in the equation, that will tell me where the x-intercept is. Okay, and what I can do then is figure this out, and I can say uh, negative one is equal to two x, Okay, and x would be equal to negative one half. Okay, so that means that this point here is that x equals negative one half. Okay, or I could say that the ordered pair there 
is x is equal to negative one half, y is equal to zero. Okay, similarly, for the y-intercept, what I can do is I can find out that the y-intercept uh, occurs where x equals zero. And again, it's because the y-axis occurs along the point or the line where x equals zero. So what I can do is I can say y is equal to two times zero plus one. So I set x to be zero y is equal to 0 plus 1, so y is equal to 1. And so what I can say is that this ordered pair, okay, this intercept, is at the point 0, 1. Okay, and that's pretty much how you can find the x and y intercepts. Now sometimes it gets a little more complicated. And I'll show you another example here. So for instance, let's say I, you don't have a graph at all, so you can't draw it. And you have something like y um, is equal to, let's say, x squared minus 16. Okay, now one thing you could do is draw this graph. Um, and if you did draw it, you, what you would find is that this would be some form of parabola. And so what we, but what we don't really have to even draw it. What we can do is we can just look at it and say, well, okay, at the x-intercepts, the y values are zero. So we're going to say zero is equal to x squared minus 16. Well, that still doesn't really help us that much until we look at the fact that um, that we can factor this. And if you're unfamiliar with factoring, please look at my other videos on factoring. So I can say zero is equal to x plus four and x minus 4, this being a difference of squares. Now, in order for these two things to multiply to be 0, so if I had a times b is equal to 0, either a has to be 0, b has to be 0, or both of them have to be 0. Okay, so what this means is that either x plus 4 has to be equal to 0, or x minus 4 has to be equal to 0. Okay, and what this means is that x is equal to either negative 4 from this equation, or x can be equal to positive 4. Okay, and that means that there are two x-intercepts for this equation. So let's go and take a look at um, the Cartesian grid that I just had before. Okay, so this is Cartesian grid that I had before, and the equation that we were using was y is equal to x squared minus 16. Okay, so let's uh, just plot a few points. So when x is equal to 0, okay, then y is equal to negative 16. Okay, when x is equal to 1, okay, y is equal to, so it's 1 minus 16, it's negative 15. When x equals 2, we have 2 squared is 4 minus 16 is negative 12. Okay, uh, when x is equal to 3, we have 3 squared minus 16, uh, which is 9 minus 16 is negative 7. Okay, and when x equals 4, Okay, we have uh, 16 minus 16, which is uh, 0. Okay, and now some of these aren't going to be able to be plotted because this graph just isn't big enough. Okay, but let's see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 0. So I'll just draw this in a different color here. So we have a point here. We have 3 and negative 7, so here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So about here. Okay, 0 and negative 16, so it goes pretty deep. It looks like it's falling. But let's take a look at what happens on the negative side. So when I got negative 1, okay, then I get negative 1 squared, which is 1, and we get minus 16. Uh, so that would be 1 minus 16 is again negative 15. And then we get uh, 2, with our negative 2, and negative 12, and negative 3, and negative 7, and negative 4, and 0. Okay, now what this would mean is that this is going to go pretty deep, so it's going to come down like this, and then 
um, let's see, at negative 3, we're also going to have a negative 7. Okay, so we're going to have another one there, and then back to a 0 at negative 4. And what this means is that we're going to have some form of parabola. This one's just not drawn correctly there. And it will look something like this. You'll have to forgive me, it's actually quite difficult to draw things like this on using just a pad here. Okay. But your parabola will look uh, like a much neater version of uh, something like this. Okay, and this is the this is the graph then. Okay. Now what this means is that um, besides just drawing the graph, um, you can tell a lot just from looking at the zeros of the graph. Now sometimes this could be represented for instance like this might represent um, like something being thrown into the water and then coming to resurface. Or another one, uh, if you were to flip this, it could be representative of, um, say, a projectile being thrown and you want to see where it's going to land. Uh, and you could use the zeros to find that out. It's actually a very, very useful uh, way of solving problems. And once you get more into mathematics and learning how to model problems, um, this sort of thing, or finding the zeros of of a, of a graph, either the x-intercept or the y-intercept, um, actually is a really, really helpful thing. So anyways, hopefully this helps you to find the x or y-intercepts of a graph. If you have any questions, then please let me know. If uh, you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, and if you like my channel, then please subscribe.